There, that's the mic that I want. Okay, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Switch over to predictions. Hello! Uh, I'm going to... Hold on, i got to change a couple things real quick. Get rid of that. And then we're going to scoot... Oh, I actually have to unlock that. We're going to scoot it over so you guys can see the full logo. All right, so yeah, uh, Andrew doesn't have a camera. No big problem. I'm just going to... I'm actually going to shrink my camera down a little bit. And so you'll be able to see my lovely face. And you'll uh, be able to see the predictions, which I have on a notepad and are up here on the screen. Uh, let me unmute Andrew here so that y'all can hear him. Andrew, if you could uh, speak for a moment so I can get your level. Uh, when I was born at a very early age. Um... I'm a little bit older than my teeth, but the same age as my gums. Mm, right, right. Okay, so you're good. All right. So, all out happening tonight at 8. So, we're going to go through our ground rules real quick. For every match that you get right, you get one point. If it's a match that has uh, more than just two opponents, like a tag match or uh, the... Casino Battle Royale. If you can figure Oof. out which people are involved in the pin, you get a half point for each. And you get one... Is it a full point or a half point for shenanigans? Half. Half point. You get a half point if you can figure out... Uh, if you can guess which match will have shenanigans and who will do it. Um, and you get one shenanigans per card. So... Uh, since... I lost last time. I'm going to have to go first on all of these. <laughs> oh, I'm not That's confident. I'm, I'm very I'm very behind on Dark by like a few months, and I didn't see the last two Dynamites. So, uh, this is, this is not, not a good... You're already boned. Oh, man. Okay. So, Private Party versus Dark Order. This is specifically three and four from Dark Order in a tag team. And that is Reynolds and Silver. Reynolds and Silver. Yep, yep. Okay. Um, I'm glad that they finally have an actual specific Dark Order name for them. So, um, this one seems pretty cut and dry to me. Private Party. Gonna win that one. Hmm. So, you say you're behind on AEW Dark, huh? <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty Never behind. would have guessed that. <laughs> oh, boy. Your, uh, considering they won their match last night in very decisive manner mm. and the fact that uh private party has kind of not been doing great lately they're starting to get there with the matt hardy mentor thing but that's kind of playing into why they're not doing great either because he's got his own problems going on mm. so there's distraction right, right um matt's not as focused on them as he could be helping them guarantee a win so there's the, you know, is he really, you know, focused or is he whatever? So I have to say Dark Order gets this one. And yep. you're not thinking of the overall stories either. Mm. Uh, simply the fact that Mr. Brody Lee is on a high from winning right now. Yeah. Um, and he has been pushing harder for everyone to win. So right, I right. theorize that we will see them win this week, but then s headed towards what I presume will be full gear, we'll start to see a little decline from the two of them. Mm. Okay. Leading to maybe Brody Lee kicking them out at full gear if he can't if they can't beat him in Colt Cabana. Right, right. Okay, and since this is a tag match, uh, who do you think is going to get the pin and who's going to give it? I think 
Uh, the pinner will be silver. Okay, silver pins. I don't. Uh, they should be protecting Mark Quinn. They should be. I don't. They haven't been. Or it's been him taking a pin a couple times lately. Mm. Uh, it's fairly fifty-fifty him and Isaiah Cassidy, but right. Like Mark Quinn is the breakout net. He is the Shawn Michaels here. Right. Um, that said, they may be trying to kind of edge people away from seeing that as much. Like maybe he's great as far as offense, but when it comes to like defending himself and not getting pinned, oh, he's got work to do. So that could be why they're doing it that way. Okay. But uh, I see probably Mark Quinn taking the pin. All right. Silver pins Just... Quinn, and I, I I think I'll agree with that for pretty much the same reasons. Well, except you think it'll be Quinn pinning Silver because you picked yeah. a private party to win. Sorry. Well, actually thinking about it, yeah, 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 I'm going to go with that. That way we will at least be tied if you're correct. <laughs> um okay so next up is Britt baker versus big swole in the the to- tooth match what was it tooth and nail tooth and nail match all right so going first on this one as well i mean Britt now, baker has been playing the hard heel for quite a while and big swole like big swole is definitely coming up like i feel like big swole is going to be going for the championship next pay-per-view maybe one after that so, yeah, I'm I'm saying Swole is winning this one. Hmm. Hmm. Now, let, tell so, me because I actually haven't seen it. Are there any special rules to this match? Uh, it's a cinematic match. Hmm. So, in the same vein as Stadium Stampede or, uh. Over at WWE, the Boneyard match, etc. Mm-hmm. Uh, false count anywhere situation. Right. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, okay. Yeah, my answer doesn't change, but that that does sound exciting. Th- this is a packed card, and there's some real exciting stuff coming. So you're going to go with who to win? Big Swole. Big Swole to win. Yeah. So, looking at the article you sent me, they make the point that in order to finish, it makes sense for Swole to win. Mm -hmm. In order to finish the story. But they could try to get uh, Britt Baker more heel heat by having her win. That's true. And a bigger push following. Uh, That's the big thing here is like, I I know Swole is going to kick Britt Baker in the ass eventually but when is the thing is it gonna be now i'm saying yes but they could try and pull it out even further so my theory is no matter who wins they can extend the feud that's true that's very true it could just be a long running back and forth well i see it extending to full gear maybe Mm, okay um only because they really don't have like if Britt Baker's still injured enough that she's having to do a cinematic match now Mm -hmm. she's probably not cleared enough to come back and begin a actual angle with anybody else right and say what you will but the AEW has not been great with their women's division and building stories yeah unfortunately like the the women's division, it has a ton of talent, and I, yeah. I do enjoy a lot of them. And there have been some pretty good promos. This, Nyla Rose does some great promos. They've been building Brit somewhat, but they just have they've still been slacking on those those storylines actually happening. The the big running feuds. It's it's a lot of small bites and not the real meal that we want. Right. So I don't see them throwing away their biggest women's storyline, their only women's storyline that they've got right now, uh, 
in an era with no fans and an injured star. I see them wanting a real blow-off, in-ring, big show, even if that is in front of limited fans at Daly's Place at Full Gear. Mm-hmm. The only way I see that extending logically... <sighs> so if Big Swole wins, you could have Britt Baker angry about it. Like maybe Big Swole also ruins the office, the dentist's office. Mm. Uh, yeah. So Britt Baker wants revenge for that on top of everything else. If Britt Baker wins, Big Swole would look really petty as the babyface trying to continue their feud. Um, yeah, that's oh yeah, that's uh, true. So if they do want to pull this out, Britt Baker kind of kind of has has to. to win. So that's yeah. that's my point: is that is this going to be the end or not? I'm, I'm I don't s- think so. I'm saying it is, but yeah, I I would say. So you're going Brit. Yes, but not very. And obviously, I'm gonna say there will be shenanigans during this, but I'm not using my shenanigans token on this. Okay. Um, okay. Because you've got Reba yep. slash Rebel, you've got the dentist's office, you've got all kinds of things where this is the heels' home turf. Mm-hmm. against the baby face who got you know embarrassed on wednesday with the pizza mm. i i think brit will win but i think it will be not a clean finish but i'm saving my shenanigans token okay okay i think this will be a i cheated to win but look how great I am. I won. Oh, she didn't win. I that's won. It. That's very in character for Brit. Yeah. All right. So moving on next, we have Young Bucks v. Jurassic Express. Hmm. I mean, they really want to push Jurassic Express. Is this the, is this the moment where Young Bucks take take a hit for uh for Jurassic Express to have a come up mm. I mean Young Bucks also haven't haven't had a ton of wins mm. I'm I'm saying Jurassic Express I think or wait actually which members of Jurassic Express is it Lucha and Jungle. Yeah, I'll say Jurassic Express then. Okay. Um, so, I think this is where you and I differ. You think ahead long term mm-hmm. and make presumptions about where a show can, can and should go. Right. I'm thinking about the storylines. Mm. And okay. that's why the Young Bucks are definitely going to win. Um, Jurassic Express is a top tier tag team even if they're not booked that way they're over and that gives them a lot more sway it's like they said about the ranking system a win over Sean uh, Dean every week yeah you get 14 wins and 0 losses but that's not the same as a win over Kenny Omega one time True. Um, so this is a Kenny Omega kind of thing where the Young Bucks pinning Jurassic Express, yeah, they're not high in the rankings, but they are not Sean Dean. Um, mm. So, and that's not a knock on Sean Dean. He's just there to job out to people on Dark. He's very good. I hope they sure. sign him. I really do. He's good. Um, I got I got to catch up on Dark. I think the last one I watched was in, like, the low 20s. I'm well, so behind. Well, you can behind. watch Last Nights, because Last Nights was a very big one. Mm. Um we had an official name change this week. I, I we'll get to that okay. when we get to their match. But uh, the Young Bucks win uh, because their storyline, they have one, and Jurassic Express does not. And their storyline is, we were going to be in the tag team match for the title, but right. we were screwed over. And I think that this is leading... So there's a lot of speculation about where tonight will go. I don't think tonight is the end point for this. I think this is the 
beginning of the end. I think what we'll see tonight is a setup for a three-way match at full gear. Mm. Young Bucks versus FTR versus Page and Omega. Oh, okay. I wasn't even thinking about that angle. Yeah, because they're all bickering and fighting with each other. And they're all friends with each other. And Paige is kicked out of the Elite. He cost them their title match. I think we're going to see the Young Bucks take out a lot of aggression and anger on Jurassic Express Mm -hmm. and win. So that's who I'm officially going with. However, I do think there is precedent here for you to be correct and that Jurassic Express wins because of this. The Young Mm. Bucks are distracted and don't take them as seriously and are more concerned with the uh, tag team titles. And that's why they get involved in the uh, match later. Uh, Which, if that doesn't telegraph it, that's where my shenanigans token is going. Okay. Is the tag title match. Um, Okay, so so who are you going with for Young Bucks v. Jurassic Express? Bucks, because they're the only ones going into this with a story. All right. You got Bucks. I got Jurassic Express. So moving on. Next up is a three-on-three. We got Dark Order versus or no four and four right yeah yeah versus yeah. uh the natural nightmares matt cardona and scorpio sky um honestly you convinced me a lot with the dark order bit back there and while scorpio sky has been having a great time in dark matt cardona is still pretty new to AEW, and natural nightmares haven't had the best record in general uh so i think well, wait. Which members of the Dark Order do we have in this one? Uh, Colt Cabana, Brody Lee, and Uno and Grayson. Yeah, no, I'm definitely going Dark Order then. Yeah, uh, fully agree. And who do you think is going to get the pin and who do you think is going to take it? That's true. Oh, and actually, uh, let's step back for a minute. We didn't say that for uh, Bucks v. Jurassic Express. Which I'm going to um, go a little wild and say Lucha Saurus is going to pin Nick. No, Matt. I, I, I know that's not, that's very unlikely to happen, but I'm just throwing right. it out that's, there. That's the only option you really got. Um, yeah. If I were you, that's what I would pick too if I thought Jurassic Express was going to win. Yeah. Um. Hmm. With the Young Bucks winning, it makes sense that Nick would get the rub. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to protect Luchasaurus. You definitely want to protect Luchasaurus. Oh, yeah. They're, Jungle so, they're Boy, trying to make him seem like a, a mountain that cannot be climbed. Not yet. Jungle Boy, on the other hand, has taken a lot of pins, but in a way that protects him. Especially if the Young Bucks go vicious, like I theorize, mm. to show that they are done playing and being nice, and they're going... A little more heel uh and we'll get into that later as well um i think that nick pins jungle boy so the exact opposite of yours okay so there is a chance we both get a half point on that if say matt pins jungle boy luchasaurus pins nick however it shakes out yeah all right so scooting back forward to let me scroll up uh Dark Order versus Natural Nightmare, that that whole match. Uh, I'm going to say Brody is going to get that. Get... That pin? Uh, well, no. I'm going to say Brody is going to get into a position where he could pin, and he's going to give it to Colt, as he's done no. before. No? No. No, I'm not seeing that. Um, Colt is more... Like, it's not saying Dark Order and Colt Cabana versus Natural Nightmares, Matt Cardona and Scorpio Sky. Oh, that's right. It's saying Dark Order. Um, and last night on Dark, Colt Cabana was more... He came out to his own music, but he was berated by Stu Grayson and Evil Uno for being too nice, mm. who chewed him out for not you know, being crueler and harsher in the ring. Oh, okay, yeah. In that case, I'm going to say Brody 
Brody pins. Natural Nightmares QT. is is Dustin and QT, right? Yeah, it's QT. Yeah, I'm saying QT. QT, or if you want a shock uh, value for it, Dustin. I would say, yeah, maybe Dustin, but... But you don't want to no. pin Scorpio right now. Oh, no. You don't want to pin Matt Oh, way all. too early to pin Matt. Um, and having one of the other members of Dark Order eat the pin instead of Brody Lee from, like, a Scorpio or Matt doesn't make much sense to me. Mm-hmm. Because they are booking uh, Brody to look... Like, look how they booked him against Cody. They're not going to have Dark Order lose here. Right. So, I'm going to go with Brody Lee pinning QT because that's the safe bet, but it could also be Dustin. Okay, so you got to lock one in. Are you going to go Dustin for the chance of that half point over me, or are you just going to go with QT? I'm going with QT. Like, it's a safe bet. Okay, okay. All right, that's... We're a little... We're close to the halfway point here, so let's... Let's get into Hikaru Shida v. Thunder Rosa, which is a women's championship match. Um, now, remind me, who is Thunder Rosa? The NWA women's champion. Ooh. Um, so, what's interesting about Thunder Rosa, last year, WWE called her for a tryout. Keep in mind, she is the NWA women's champion uh debuted in nwa in october became the champion sometime earlier this year and wwe called her in to audition and try out as a fucking referee Um, oh come on now apparently tony khan has talked about this recently the working relationship with nwa is due to the fact that he and billy corgan are good friends um Mm. And this was an idea they kind of came up with together to promote the NWA, you know, while they're not running shows because of the speaking out movement. <laughs> and so hmm. it's not due to the pandemic that they're not running shows, folks. I'll just say that. Um, yeah. I think it's obvious Sheena wins. I mean, oh, totally. Yeah, they're not. While that's that's certainly a formidable opponent, uh, Sh- Shida oh, is not be a, giving it up. It's going to be a big match. Oh, yeah. Now this could. Now I will say this: if Rosa wins, if she wins, which will be shocking, it could mean a close working relationship with NWA is going to be more common going forward. Mm. And I think that would be cool because then we get the potential Cody Rhodes versus Nick Aldis 2 or 3 for the title Ooh. for the NWA World Heavyweight title, which Cody won at All Out or All In two years ago, making him and his father a legendary first. They are the first two to be father and son to hold that title. Hmm. No other father and son duo. Keep in mind, we talked on our podcast, which comes out later today, about how that title is the first world title in wrestling. Um, started shortly around uh, World War One. Cody and Dusty are the only father and son duo to hold that title ever. So, a close working relationship with NWA would benefit AEW for just those big name matches like that. Plus, it allows a door open for FTR, who are very much an old school style wrestling team, to go to the old school style wrestling company for exhibition matches. I think that is a masterstroke idea. And while I still say she does definitely a lock to win, we'll know a little more if Rosa wins that that's in the pipeline as a potential. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm going to say though, yeah, the Sheeta is not going to lose the belt to anyone except for Swole or no. um or 
Britt blanking Baker. the a- the alien. Chris Statlander's Chris out with Statlander. injury. Won't be back for a while. Shoot, yeah, so it's probably going to go to Swole next, but... I don't see it. I don't see Swole. Um, no, really? I think, no. Uh, it'll either be Nyla Rose or Britt Baker. They've already started hinting at Nyla Rose getting it back. Uh, I don't... With her and Vicky Guerrero. I don't really see Britt having it. Oh, yeah. Maybe. She's definitely being set up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. The only reason she's not is uh, she got injured. Like, it's... Okay. She's going to be the the AEW women's Roman Reigns or John Cena. Um, she's going to get pushed a little more than maybe we, the fans, would like for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Not a bad thing. She's good, but... Yeah. All right, so we both say Sheeta for that one. Now, next up is the 21-man casino Battle Royale. Now, we don't have all the names for this yet, but uh, some of the ones I'm seeing here... Lance Archer, Brian Cage, Jake Hager, Eddie Kingston, Dar- Darby Allen, Ricky Stark, Sean Spears. Are there any other names that I didn't mention? Uh, so there is Lance Archer, yep. Brian Cage, Ricky Starks, Jake Hager, uh, Eddie Kingston, and Pentagon, Ray, mm. uh, fucking Butcher and Blade are all going to be in it. Darby Allen. You're probably going to see a couple of the dark guys on there, like a Fabu Andre or a Sean Dean. Mm. Um, Their prediction on this website, which is Bleacher Report, will be an unannounced winner. That's a possibility. mm, I'm trying to work out because winner gets a world championship match as before. uh I don't like that idea that Mm. unannounced. See, I want it to be somebody like an Eddie Kingston or a Darby Allen I was or a Lance say, Archer. Those who's three, been those three, their ass. and then like Brian Cage as like a fourth would be my People options. Who, but those those three, it, it could be Cage anyone. had his chance. Cage had his chance against uh, Mox. I don't. Oh, he want did. Him. That's right. Okay, so yeah, I'd say. And he, he's why I don't like the idea of an unannounced winner because they're suddenly the number one contender. Yeah. And while the rules of the match do make that okay, I don't like the idea that that's how they, um, what's the word I'm looking for here, Higgins? Oh, the, they have that ranking system. Yeah. And I don't like that they're just tossing that aside a lot. Because MJF argued, well, why is everyone else getting a shot when I'm undefeated this year? And he had a good point. Yeah. And, um... Then you compare it to like Brian Cage, who just walked in, won one match, and automatically had a title shot. Yeah, that's what I'd say. Is that like, well, yeah, that's correct. That um, that MJF should get a match, but it's like, it's also if you're not able to win the matches that could get you a shot, like, doesn't that also say a lot about you as a contender that you're yeah. not able to win when it really matters? Yeah, and another thing about it is. I want them to modify the ranking system so that it's, I mean, it's already like this, but I want them to officialize that it's fluid, Mm -hmm. that outside circumstances can make a difference, that while, yes, the ranking system is used in situations where, say, oh, well, we don't really have a feud for the champion, let's look at the ranking system. But if the champion, you know, has gone and started a fight with someone else or someone has started a fight with the champion for, you know, reasons other than the title, then obviously let that be the story. You know, that that be the match instead and, to, and use the ranking system as a, well, this is who's earned it. So they're next, you know, kind of thing. Right. Um, I do wish they'd bring back that panel of judges like they did for uh, Jericho versus uh, Omega. Yeah, 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 yeah. I liked that idea. I wish they'd bring it back. Well, that's the thing, too. Or was is... that Cody? That was Cody. Was I don't it? recall, but, like, yeah, they, they haven't done that since, and I liked it because even though they didn't really come into play, it implies that it could come down to that, and it opens up so many opportunities for people to be able to question the results. If someone's like, I'm not, I don't really think that that, that's the person who should have won. I feel like something should be going on with the judges and you could even have behind the scenes stuff like being shown of like, Oh, they paid off that judge 
they just yeah. it didn't come up until too late so like so stuff like that that it brings an interesting element to the proceedings so who are your last two for the oh uh speaking on the name change mm, oh yeah pentagon jr is gone oh he is now penta el cero uh m mm. in case you, and you may have noticed that uh, the past couple weeks, that is actually how he's been referred to on Dynamite. And you might not have caught it, or you might have thought, why is uh, JR talking like that? Uh, it's because Pentagon Jr. is owned by, I want to say CMLL, the name, mm. and he doesn't own the rights to that. Yeah. So he does own the rights to Penta El Cero M, which is, you know, no fear. So, I mean, that's a lot of times when there are name changes and things, it comes down to copyright nonsense. Yeah, it's basically he wanted to be able to put shirts in Hot Topic, which he just inked a deal on. Oh, yeah. And... Here's a question. Speaking of merch, have you been able to get any of the figures? I, I've been checking everywhere I can, but they're sold out pretty much everywhere. Our Walmart had just the belt and the ring left. Yeah, same. Same. Every time I go, like, they have the belt and they have the ring. And they have, like, the four slots where the figures would go, but they never have the figures out. All they have is the, the AJ Styles figure right next to it. Yeah, the untouched stock of WWE next to it. Ugh. The but, weird um, stuff, like, the, there's, like, the Ghostbusters, John Cena, the, like, weird He-Man crossover. I don't even know what they're doing. Yeah. Um. So who do you think the last two will be? The last two... Um, so that's, that's what it's that's, gonna come down to. That's what it's gonna come down to. I'm gonna say I think it's gonna be Archer and Allen as the last two. Mm, really? I mm, wait. Because they don't have a storyline going right now, whereas Allen does with Ricky Starks. Ricky Stark. Wait a minute. Right, Ricky Starks is here. Uh, hmm. I think them then. Maybe. No. I don't see either one of them challenging Mox for the title. I don't know. Darby has really, they've been pushing him over and over again. I think the the issue is they're trying to get it to a point where he seems formidable, even though he's kind of small. I don't know. I, I think a cool final two, not necessarily the final two, but I think a cool one would be uh, Lance Archer and Brian Cage. Ooh, that would be neat. But I think the they're gonna. Actual... I, I feel like they are gonna butt heads at some point in the match. I don't know if it'll be necessarily the final two, but yeah, they need a, a, a monster versus monster beef slapper. Hmm. I think. Hold on, before you say it, let's let's say this. We haven't done it in the past, but let's modify our rules a bit. If you can figure out the 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 last two. You get a half point for each of the last two that you get right. So if you get them both right, right, you get one point, plus one point for the winner. If you get at least one of them that's involved in the last two, you get half point. All right. I think the last two will be... <laughs> I want it to be Eddie Kingston and Eddie take the win. Mm -hmm. I think Eddie Kingston versus John Moxley at full gear is a fucking banger. That that does sound pretty good. Um, I think that the number two man, the one that Eddie will beat, I'm going with Eddie Kingston. I'm following my heart instead of uh, uh, logic. I think Eddie Kingston will win because he's been talking about we're going to, it's going to be one of the men in this ring that wins. And then he does that wink to camera every time they do the group hug. Mm, yeah. I don't see, and the other four men in that group are tag teamers. I don't see Butcher or Blade. I All don't right. see Ray. I could see Pentagon, but I don't see it being him this time. Right. Um, I think it's going to be Eddie Kingston, mm -hmm. one, and number two, the most decorated champion in WWE history vacant mm. it's going to be someone unnamed that we haven't been told yet okay uh, that joke being uh, whenever a title is 
vacated in WWE. Mm-hmm. They just show a silhouette of like a gray person. Oh. <laughs> with the title. And it's champion. Vacant. <laughs> So the most nice. decorated champion in WWE history is vacant. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, <laughs> they haven't had a chance to do that in AEW yet, but no, not yet. I I am surprised they haven't resorted to that. Um, when like Mox was kind of out for a while, he he sent in promos and stuff, but he was clearly like not involved for a minute. Oh, it was only two weeks. That's um, yeah, yeah. When his wife caught COVID. Right. Which is part of the reason why she left WWE just recently. Hmm. Spilling some tea up in here. I think I think I'm gonna say Eddie Kingston as well, but I'm gonna go Eddie Eddie Hmm. Archer Darby. Or it could be somebody not announced. You it could go with could... someone else. I'm gonna say it could be one of the guys from Dark. It could be Fabu Andre. Wow. We I'm, need to discuss him when this is over. I'm going to say Eddie Archer for the last two. Eddie Archer. Because mm. that at least it covers two-thirds of the possible th- final three. Mm, mm. So that it's it, not a bad call. I yeah. don't see Archer getting that close to the main event picture yet. I don't, yeah. I feel like it, he has to be taken out by somebody bigger to really make it believable, but... That's what I'm going with. Kingston to win. Kingston to Archer last two. Especially since he's not had like a big win lately. Yeah. Like he's had wins, but he's not had a like, oh my God, kind of win. This could be that, but I don't think you should have that right before your number one contender. Like yeah. you should become number one contender through that. Exactly. And the last time he had a title shot, it was good, is, but it was against Cody. That's how they kind of screwed up Brian Cage. They like had him come in and immediately like, bam, bit, Which big contender. And it's like, okay, he's a big dude, but it's like, that feels a little cheap. That's why uh, I think a problem with the phrasing of not someone not announced will win is that we read that as, um, oh, it'll be someone not with the company already. Right, when because it... they have taken that time to like introduce new people and it's it's exciting, but they I don't feel like you should win from that. You can do well. But like Let giving me... giving them the win, I feel like is is it's it's gilding the lily. It's being like, "Oh, it's exciting. Everybody everybody's clearly going to everybody's clearly going to be like super super popped for this guy so why don't we just keep going and like let them win and then everybody will lose their minds and it's like uh no no they're tr- they're they're pushing they're they're pushing their bets a little too far in the hopes that they can get the double up on that so let me throw out some actual roster names that aren't already on the card sure and helico mm. austin gun mm? uh oh my god that gum is, club clip where Excalibur was screwing with uh, Taz. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that a good bit? He, he's a member of uh, a gum club. G- gum club? Like what you chew? Yeah. He's oh. like, are you serious? Oh. <laughs> oh, it's a it's a pun. It's gum. Um, gum club. You... <laughs> so I know Peter Avalon mm. challenged uh, Brandon Cutler to a match. I, Which we all predicted was coming. Oh, man. But and here's the question. Have either of them gotten any wins yet? No, they both have perfect losses. Yeah, so if that happens, that means at least one of them is coming away with a win. Unless they... Unless they, like... It's a... a mm. That was... I, I, the, the only... If, was... if they both get knocked out, nobody gets the pin... So it's basically just draw. Or if they do a count out or a... Count out, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, like, they could both not answer a 10 count to stand up. Like, they're both knocked out clean in the ring. They could both ring out. They could both uh, double DQ somehow. Um, there's a lot of ways they could prolong that, but I don't think they should. I feel like it's gone on long enough. It's been the in- the entirety of Dark... I don't see, I can't remember if their match was made for this show or not. 
So it might be for the next pay per view. I'm hoping. I'm so hoping that, that also... even even if one of them. Uh, so so my prediction for that, even though this isn't this is not on the card, but my prediction for that Avalon versus Cutler. Because on on um, on BTE, Cut, uh, Cutler is getting called up by Avalon, and Avalon's always gloating at him. Um, I think what would be funny, at least, is I want Cutler to win, then Avalon to call him up and gloat that he doesn't have a perfect record anymore. It's a perfect loss record, but it's still not perfect now. <laughs> I think uh, that might be what happens, but... I think so that puts Brandon Cutler and Peter Avalon in this match potentially. Uh it would be great if they were the final two. Mm. And they both failed at the same time. Uh Christopher Daniels is not on the card that I can see. Neither are Trent or Chuck Taylor. Neither is uh Wow, their roster is so much bigger on their website than it <laughs> used to be. I don't think Kazarian is on the card either. Oh, Jack yeah. Evans, Joey Janela, Janela, uh, Kip Sabian, Luther. Kip Sabian, I think he's gotten kind of pushed to the side because um, Marco. They oh, were... Marco's definitely going to be in this. Oh, certainly. Um, the with Kip, it's because they were pushing. They were pushing no. him in havoc, and he's getting his comeback on dark. Okay, um, okay. I'm yeah, just saying, like they they him. clearly had a, a plan for the both of them, and mm-hmm. the wrench got thrown in that. So I I feel like they're gonna have to re. They're just in a transition period of like reworking what they're gonna do with him. Yeah, uh, Michael Nakazawa. Oh yeah, I mean Santana and Ortiz. Oh well. Hmm. Uh, here's a name for maybe a unannounced return, but I, I think international law comes into play here. Pack. Yeah, I, I'd love to see him, but um, there I there are there away, are some so. issues. I don't think he would not be able to go back if he came over. Sean Spears and Sonny Kiss. Mm, yeah, yeah. I'd love Trent. to see Sonny. Wardlow. Yeah. Oh, oh, Iggy. MJF wins the title. Wardlow's number one contender. Oh, now that's going to be screwy. Oh, would that not be a great fucking lead up to full gear, though? It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Um, But I think it's going to be Eddie Kingston throwing out vacant. Yep. And I'm saying Eddie throwing out Archer. So. Oh, that's interesting. They're. Um, announcers page for their broadcast team includes uh alex abrahantes dasha gonzalez Mm -hmm. who do the spanish commentary alex marvez who does a lot of the backstage jr justin roberts taz shivani and they still list golden boy when was the last time you saw golden boy on aew oh it's been i has he i think he was on like Fight for the or Fighter Fest last year, and that was the last I've seen him. I think there was like one dark that he was doing commentary on late last year, but that was Maybe. about it. It was like early, early on. It's definitely been like I don't oh, think he's been on the... since twenty twenty started. Yeah, no, and it could be COVID. Entirely, it could be. But... I mean, he definitely um, faded away before that, but I'm assuming he's just still on contract. He just hasn't been able to do it. Oh, this is interesting. Um, Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard, along with Billy Gunn and Jerry Lynn, are listed as coaches in AEW. Mm-hmm. But so is Vicky Guerrero. Yeah, she's Nyla's coach. No, she's Nyla's manager. Okay, okay. Sure. And I find that interesting that they they either appear to be conflating the two, or I mean, Vicky is actually doing. She's a great promo. They they and have the be, same. They're taking up the same role, really. Yes, but like the coach thing is very much uh, with Arn Anderson at least something Cody is doing. It's something. Like, Arn isn't my manager. He's my coach. He's the mm-hmm. coach of the Nightmare Family. So it could be that. But right, I think I think that it's going to be 
Eddie Kingston wins. I think he's a good choice to win. Uh, he's just too fucking good on the mic. Hey, did he you? He is so fucking good. When you stream, do you use OBS? I'm getting like a weird flicker. I don't think. L let me let us know in the chat if uh, you see like a flicker on the screen. I think it's. I, I think it might just be my my monitor, but when I switch over to just my wallpaper, it's not showing it. Hmm. Uh, I'm pulling it up right now, and I'm. You look fine to me. Okay, yeah, it's just like the the gray borders are like kind of flicking to black every now and then. If I switch like over to a different thing and then back, it stops for a second. I don't know. Regardless, if you guys see anything weird, let us know in the chat. I'll do my best to fix it. All right. Uh, moving forward, we Page got... Omega versus yeah. FTR. Who you got? Page Omega versus FTR. Um. <clears throat> Now this is a good question because they've been trying to they've been pushing FTR pretty hard and they've been pushing mm -hmm. this specific feud quite a bit. It's a sillier thing, which honestly I feel like a lot of stuff with Paige has been mostly sillier. Omega can go silly and he can go serious sometimes too. Um, specifically, the the onus for their their feud is uh is pretty silly, but you think. You think the uh, page is afraid of facing the Bucks again is silly? And the FTR uh, manipulating things to okay. put them back in the... Okay, so I, I guess I missed that bit. <laughs> I, like I said, I am behind, so... Well, so uh, the whole thing is there was that tag tournament to determine mm -hmm. who would face pa uh, Paige and Omega. Right. Uh, and... Paige kept Matt from saving Nick oh. when he fa when they faced uh I can't remember who it was they faced I want to say FTR maybe might have been someone else even lower on the rung because they went out first round mm -hmm. um and he just walked back with this look on his face of what the fuck did I just do and it was implied that FTR talked him into that mm. by making him afraid to face them again. Um, but FTR then exposed that no, that was all Hangman. He's afraid of facing them again. I and uh, yeah, okay. Hmm. So I wouldn't call it exactly silly. And that and so who do you got? Now throw out my story idea after this. It's always tricky with Paige. He's got a lot of weird inner turmoil going on, and it always throws a wrench in this tag team in general. I would say... Hmm. I would say, if we are leading to that three-way three, three -way match, I think... I think FTR is going to take it. I think it's about time for the, the belt to change hands, and I think FTR would, are definitely... Definitely... Um, definitely contenders for that. So that's mm. that's what I'm saying, and I feel like it it will add a lot of a lot of juice, a lot of juice to uh, Omega Page, FTR, Young Bucks if that three way happens, because then there's even more depth to their their whole dynamic. All right. Um, I'm going to say if there is a definitive winner. That it is also FTR. Mm -hmm. However, I'm throwing in my shenanigans token. Ooh, shenanigans! Okay, who do you think who do you think's doing it? Obviously, the Young Bucks. They're going yeah. to interfere. They're going to cost Page somehow. Now, whether this leads to a complete disqualification, like the referee catches the Young Bucks doing that, and therefore. Uh, uh, Page and Omega win by you know disqualification, or whether it doesn't, and FTR wins because of Young Bucks interference. I don't know, but mm -hmm. I think that it makes more sense that Young Bucks interrupt the match, cause a DQ, and then because of that DQ, the Young Bucks uh, get included in the rematch. Down the line, oh. they're gonna, there's definitely going to be a rematch, and the Young Bucks will find a way to get into that rematch. Yep, now, yep, yep. this still works if FTR wins. Uh, 
they could still set up a rematch, but I don't see because of Kenny Omega and the storyline going on with him personally, specifically both in the tag team tournament and with Colt Cabana on BTE. I don't see if he loses the titles with page him teaming up with page again for a three way. And I mm. think that three way is the match for full gear. Like that's right. going to be their big draw. So I don't know if you've been paying attention, but they've been teasing Kenny turning heel and reverting to his cleaner gimmick. Oh yeah. I've uh, uh, since, since last all out, well, Isn't it? since no, 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 uh, since Revolution, right? Nope, it, even, even a little then. before that, since like early Dynamite, it started on BTE. Started on the BTE, first yep. Dynamite. The first Dynamite tease of Kenny going heel was actually with that match against Jungle uh, Jurassic Express, where he beat the shit out of Marco, and then continued to beat the shit out of Marco. That was the first tease there. And here's why I think that is the result. Kenny, I don't see teaming with Paige. Paige has been teasing a heel turn, but he's also looked very, very conflicted about it all. Kenny's been teasing a heel turn and enjoying it. Kenny's been happy about being a little more evil. Page looks like every choice he makes pains him to no end to make. I don't see him turning heel, and if Kenny does turn heel, Page will go along with it because he's out of the elite. He doesn't give a shit. He just wants to hold on to that title at this point. Right. But if Kenny turns heel and loses the belt, what impetus is for, there for him to get back with Page? Yeah. And I still think that three way match is a big thing, a big draw. Okay, so with that, who? How do you think um, the pin's gonna go? Who's pinning who? Or if, if the shenanig if presuming the shenanigans don't happen, there's no DQ. Presuming that, I think FTR wins. Um, either member of FTR can do the pinning. Mm -hmm. um, I think Paige takes the pin. Okay. So and you, you got to pick one from FTR. The bald one. Their names are not unique enough to separate their faces. I, yeah, Dax one, of them's, Dash. one of them's Dax. Dax Harwood. Dar Dax. Da Dax yeah. Harwood and Cash Wheeler. So their names are Dax and Cash. I, <laughs> and I yeah. get that they couldn't use their names from WWE, but they were right. much better names. Dash and Dawson. Mm. While they start the same, they're different enough that, like, did you say Cash or Dax? I said Dax. So was that Cash or Dax? <laughs> all right. So Baldwin pins Page. Yep. I'm, I'm gonna say. Hmm. See, I get what you're coming from with that, and I'm curious: is it gonna go that way, or is it gonna be another situation of Page walking away at the worst moment and leaving Omega to get pinned? No, I think Kenny. I think Kenny's gonna. Uh, do it. Or, I know, but no, no, we've no. been expecting oh, wait, 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 we've wait, been wait, expecting wait, wait, wait. that heel turn for wait, like all yeah. year. Wait a minute, hold on. Paige will not get the pin. Paige will be forced to watch the way Matt was when he fucked up the Young Bucks. He'll be the uh, one on the outside. Kenny's taking that pin if there's okay. a clean pin, and it's going to be they're going to force Hangman to like go through what he put them through. Okay, and then I'm gonna say. Uh, Herod one pins Omega just so that I, I have, have a complete opposite. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I still think Kenny's gonna get the pin, but um, I think, I think uh, just to just names. to give my me a little more a little more room to maybe get a half point. Let me pull up that roster again so I can get their actual on screen names. Sure. Uh. Cash Wheeler is who you're voting for. Okay. And I am going with Dax Harwood. Cash pins Omega. Dax pins Omega for you. Okay. So, with that, we're moving on to the match I'm honestly most excited for. 
Chris Jericho versus Orange Cassidy, the Mimosa match. The Mimosa Mayhem match. Mimosa Mayhem match. Someone is getting thrown into that giant trough of mimosa, and it's going to be glorious. All right. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <clears throat> That's not the only way to win the match, though. Oh, wait. Oh, we got a new match for the buy-in. Nope. A new match has just been announced for the buy-in. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, it will be Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss taking on Serpentico and Luther. So Janela, Janela, Kiss taking on Serpentico, Luther. Who have been getting wins on Dark, and Janela and Kiss have not been. Hmm. Yeah. See, I, I love like them, a, but that's yeah. This feels like a very dark match. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's do that one. We'll brew on the mimosa match for a minute, but we'll, let's let's do this new buy-in match that's been announced. Who do you have? Because I I ooh, it could go either way in my mind. Say you tune in. Mm -hmm. This is your first you know pay per view in a while. You haven't watched Dark. Maybe you're at a friend's house who's watching. Who do you think they're going to promote in this? Like Luther, who is you know the only ha the only signed person on that team with Serpentico, who is also the masked he he wrestles under a different name in AEW as well. Um mm. I'm giving it to Kiss uh Janela with okay. Joey pinning Serpentico. Joey it's a pins. throwaway match it feels like. Serpentico. Okay. I'm gonna I'm going to say mostly the same thing, but I'm going to say uh, Sonny gets the pin. Or Sonny gives the pin to Serpentico. Uh, this is weird. I'm sorry, I'm looking at uh, the news to make sure that nothing else gets updated. Mm -hmm. And WWE has filed a number of new trademarks. The most recent one on September 1st, 1st being for Wobbly Walrus. What? Wobbly Walrus. Is that... Is that perhaps something to do with Surf's Up 2, the animated film that has Vince McMahon as a walrus in it? No. It's the, it's it's a sequel it's unclear. to that Shia LaBeouf penguin surfing movie from like a decade ago. So it's unclear right now. Actually, more like but 15 years ago. I don't know. Bray Wyatt said on SmackDown he's introducing a new friend to the Firefly Funhouse. And that does sound like a Bray Wyatt name. Uh, like mm. Ramblin' Rabbit and, you know. Sure. I, oof, I don't think. Husk is the pig boy. I don't think I you think... can make a wobbling walrus sound. sound. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, with the F Firefly Funhouse, though. Mm. And. Ooh. It could be a mock Paul Heyman puppet. Oh. And all of that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, That's... I feel like this match being added so close at the last minute, it's definitely a throwaway match. Yeah, it's just to, so, to, to fill it fill up time. a little more. Yeah. All right. Which so... makes me wonder what was going to go in there that had to be moved. Mm, good question. Let... Let's ruminate on that. But so you were saying the Mimosa Mayhem match. So one of the ways you can win this is by getting thrown into the big old vat of Mimosa by the ring. What's the other way to win here other than the, the usuals? Pinfall and submission. Sure. And so there's a lot of theory that I whoever do, uh, wins the if match. The, if nobody gets thrown into that Mimosa, I'm, I'm going to be disappointed. A lot of build up for nothing, right? Yeah, like why yeah, they took all that time and honestly wasted a lot of champagne and orange juice if nobody goes in there. Right. So the theory amongst some is they may do similar to uh, early 2000s when Undertaker fought the Dudleys and Paul Bearer was in a tank that would fill with concrete if uh, Undertaker won and thereby die. Mm. And Undertaker, Undertaker won the match, walked up and flipped the switch himself. <laughs> and that's how the show went off the air. So there may be something similar that 
uh, Jericho may get the pin or the submission, but uh, best friends and Cassidy throw him into the mimosa yeah, that, afterward. That, that's what I'm going to say is that whether it's for the win or whether it's just as a, a gag after Jericho's going in that mimosa. Like they, now, there's, they, I'm he's going in that mimosa in one way or another. Yeah. So I think. So I, I feel like it, I'm gonna say Jericho gets a pin because of Hager shenanigans. Hager, you think? Well, mm, no, 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 not Hager. I actually. Sammy Santana and Ortiz are the only two not locked in. Uh, yeah, like actually, that. Ortiz, Santana, they're gonna have that. They're gonna have that bodega and, orange juice. And you've got the fact that best friends are feuding with Santana and Ortiz, mm-hmm. and best friends are in Orange Cassidy's corner. Yeah, I think if you're gonna play your shenanigans card, that's where I would play it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so I'm saying Jericho. Jericho's gonna win because of Ortiz Santana shenanigans. He's gonna win by a pinfall or a submission. Probably a submission. Jericho and then likes all to all three are going into likes to get him. mimosa. Yeah, and all three of them are getting thrown in that mimosa afterwards. He's gonna ruin a real nice suit. Ooh, baby. Ring gear. Oh. He'll be out of. He'll be out of the suit by then. I mean, I feel like they might even wait till he he. They'll probably like. I I could imagine Santana Ortiz coming out with like the jacket or something. He's like getting dressed back up, talking crap on the mic, and then then they come out, throw him in. So. Jericho loses nothing by losing this match, I think. Yeah. He's established enough he could lose and still be Oh yeah, he's a megastar. at this point he is just having fun with all of his matches. That's the whole reason he and Orange Cassidy are feuding. This is a totally just for fun goofing out kind of match. Kind of, the whole like storyline is just silly for fun. So that being the case, I think not only does Cassidy win, Mm-hmm. He wins by putting Jericho in the mimosa. Oh, Cassidy! I, that... I will. I'll even. I'm probably already gonna lose this because I I don't feel confident about the first half. But I will let you have, because this is a special match. Let's say, uh, um, you get a half point if you can predict who goes into the mimosa. Let's go with that. So, Jericho, mimosa'd. Yeah, and I'm gonna say, I'm also gonna say Jericho Mimosa'd, but I'll I'll say you get the point if it's the for the win. And I'm just saying he win. I, I'm not gonna count it because it's not for the win. So you, I'll, you get a half point if Cassidy wins by Mimosa ing Jericho, and I get a half point for the shenanigans. But that's the average thing. I'm pretty I'm pretty confident Jericho is absolutely going in. I th- he's going in. I thoroughly, I thoroughly believe that's how the match will end because you built. It would be like having Hell in a Cell and being told the only way to win is by pinfall or submission, and then having somebody win because the referee called it off for getting too violent. Yeah. Oh wait, Come on. that happened. Oh wait, that happened. What? What match was that? You don't know about that? That was last year. Oh, I, th- I think I think I vaguely remember you mentioning that, and I was just like, man, this is why I don't watch WWE. It was last year, and it was uh, The Fiend versus Seth Rollins. And the, uh, Seth Rollins covered The Fiend in steel chairs, and they got out a sledgehammer that he was going to hit the chairs with, and the referee said, no, 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 this you is don't... too violent. And called the match off. Oh my god, that's two kinds of dumb. First dumb is that that even happened to begin with. That's the point. It's hyper-violent wrestling when you're doing Hell in a Cell. But even ignoring that, they were trying to get credit for the sledgehammer. They were trying to be like, oh, he brought out a sledgehammer. This is brutal. It d- you don't get credit if he doesn't use it. And you get negative credit if he get he's not allowed to use it if they it's it's a reverse checkoff's gun he brings out the he's got the sledgehammer you got to use it by the end of the match if the match just ends there that's the most unsatisfying you could possibly write something you want it to get worse i can make it worse oh god what what 
earlier in the match, the Fiend used a Harley Quinn-sized mallet with no problem. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. Ah, let's, okay. WWE, everybody knows they're trash. Let's come back yeah. to some good wrestling here. Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara. Was that? Matt Hardy, we should talk about WWE after we're done with the predictions. Oh, sure, yeah. We can do else. a little little post-show kind of thing. Oh, God, they got worse. Uh, Sammy Guevara versus Matt Hardy. Yeah. This has been unintentionally built as possibly the second, like, They've been so good about their storylines in AEW, where the mm-hmm. exception of the women's division, Tony, um, that this one is so good that it could main event on any WWE show. Oh yeah, it, that's the thing. Is Sammy at first? I really, I really hated the guy, but you know what? He's he's, he's really, good at, really, really yeah. grown on me. And every and time he's, he's been in a pay per view, with the exception of the Sabian. Sabian Guevara, which was just a fizzle of a match, which is the one they decided to st- set everything up with. Like, he has impressed. He has done at least one move that has gotten clipped, gifed, sh- thrown all over Twitter, and everybody's like, yes. Yes. Have you seen, have you seen my favorite Sammy gif yet? <laughs> oh, boy. Is it the, uh, is it the wardrobe malfunction? I don't know what that means. Uh, he, he, uh, you see, he has very tight shorts that ride oh, up, no, no, and, no, no. uh, uh no. A, 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 a gentleman's bean fell from the, from the, the hem of his drawers. No. Uh, this was one where he, uh, someone else made it, and then he was like, y'all need to stop. Like, <laughs> uh, he was very, like, he's playing it up like, Everyone's bullying him on Twitter <laughs> with this one. I think you in particular will definitely love this one. But okay. like <laughs> it is possibly my favorite Sammy GIF ever. Sure. And I'll say this. Sammy, when was the last time you saw a bad Sammy Guevara match? Oh, like it's a bad been a match. long time. Bad match or bad promo. No, it's been a long time. He's 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 such a particular character, but he plays it so well. That's the thing is when I first saw him come on, I was like, I got uh, he's a YouTuber and all this, and I got just gross like Jake Paul, Logan Paul, uh, ninja from Twitch vibes. Like I just guy grossed me out. I'm like, nah, this this guy's gonna be a jerk. This guy's gonna be real gross, but like. He's 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 really proved to be able to play that character in a way that is endearing and love to hate. I'm sending you the tweet on uh, Discord. Okay. It's one worth watching before we continue. Hold on. What we got here? Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Um, hold on. I can bring it up on stream if I ooh if I do this right. Ah. Uh. If you scroll up slightly, you can see a video of it with sound effects still. Hold where on. Where he's screaming, this is gotta, not funny. I just got to... How am I, How do I do this? Uh, ah, hold on. Hold on. I can't remember how to how to do the camera. I'm just going to pop it in the middle and let it play for the rest of this. Uh, once I figure out how to crop this... Hold on. I swear. I swear <laughs> I know how to use this. It's uh, worth it, folks. It's worth it. I promise. It's It's so worth it. Crop left, crop left. Oh my god, uh, let's go with 4,000. Whoa, no. 400. Uh, shoot. Hold on. Nope, nope. Come on, come on. Oh, jeez. Oh, this is taking so long. Hold on. Uh, yes? Can you save the GIF and just, like, import the GIF? Oh god, I think that would be faster, yeah. Hold on. Cancel. Hold on. <laughs> I swear it's I, worth it. You do that. You do that. I'll talk. Okay. Um, so with the Sammy versus Matt, there's a lot going on. And you've got Sammy uh, fucked up. Like, and this is not a in storyline. He legitimately fucked up. He panicked during a spot where he was supposed to throw one of the normal steel chairs. They're normal chairs, but he grabbed one that was a little more heavy duty, a little thicker gauged metal, 
So this is one that's more, as in the world of folding chairs, luxurious. One you're not likely to see too often. Squared uh, frame, padded seat, a lot heavier. He was supposed to grab a normal one, but he couldn't find the one he was supposed to throw. So he grabbed the reg the more fancy one and beamed Matt in the face with it, which fucked Matt's face up. Matt was pissed. Legitimately. And Sammy got heat for that backstage. Um that said, Matt got revenge through something Sammy and busted him open too. Uh oh, that was you know what? Just let recently. me just let me do it like this. I think this will work a little bit better. Just got it. Um, so there's actual heat. That if you looked at the story that um, Taz was doing before Brian Cage debuted with Darby Allen, where he was like, "Look, I just want to help you get better. I think you can do better." And then afterwards, it's like, "Fuck you! I'll ruin you to prove I was right." With Brian Cage and Ricky Starks. That's similar to what's going on here. Matt tried to talk Sammy into leaving the inner circle because he feels that Jericho is using Sammy to get ahead and that Sammy can't move ahead in the inner circle. So that evolved into a blood feud instead. Um, I think personally, because of that, a lot of that's going to modify how the story plays out. Mm -hmm. There's layers here. And it prolonged to just the perfect time um, because of Sammy's other fuck-ups where he, uh, years ago on a podcast, said some inappropriate shit and wound up having to go to sensitivity training for it, which padded the story out just right to line up for this show. Um, I think, personally... This feud is great. I think both guys have equal chance of winning, to be honest. But that's not what I can put down. So, Iggy, have you got a, a an answer for us? Hold on, I'm so I almost have this GIF set up. <laughs> Hold on, I'm get, so good. This is gonna be a real sloppy crop, but I just gotta. Oh God, you know how you could make a GIF that. Uh, is a reaction like whenever somebody sends an uh, 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 money or whatever, or somebody like starts following or subscribes, a little gift can play with their name saying so and so started following. Oh, you, you got to use Streamlabs or whatever. Like, there's a way uh, you got to like code it or like use what, a third party app that doesn't work. Yeah, but Mac. if we ever if we ever get to that point, that has to be our gift heck yeah that has to be our so it's so there we go there we go finally all right that's gonna play in the play inside of the l the second l in all out okay <laughs> got it that okay has to be our so and so joined the stream gif in the yeah. future that's them getting so... thrown into the stream <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right um so hardy versus sammy guevara yeah, this is a tricky one. This is a very tricky one. Um, I could see it going either way. Ooh, I think... I think it would help cement Sammy a bit more if he won. Because, like, Matt Matt doesn't have any problems with staying over. Like, he, he's, he's a teddy bear. Everybody loves him. Yeah. So, I think he can take the loss, and Sammy could definitely use a win over Matt Hardy like that th that's gonna like help not only cement him as a formidable opponent but it'll help cement him as a heel taking down such a, a beloved figure so yeah I'm saying I'm saying that Sammy is gonna win this one mm. I'm gonna be honest this is the hardest one on the card for me yeah like all the others, I'm pretty confident in. Mm -hmm. Uh, for whatever reason, um, I I look at this one. This is the hardest one on the entire card because 
this one is so 50 50 like they've both been built more or less the same way um hmm you know what i'm gonna go opposite you and say matt hardy okay. just because i think uh we need to be a little more diverse um sure and yeah, it's a it's a hard one i could see either going either way i honestly would like it better if this one went neither way uh a count out maybe yeah or just a double dq or like mm. like no definitive finish like maybe that one would, of them that would be satisfying like i want a non-definitive finish for this one match like it's the one time I want a match to really just keep like a feud to go on a little longer. I want this to lead to like a cage match because sure. I feel like a regular match isn't good enough. This needs a stipulation. This needs oh, this one rides out a little longer. Maybe maybe they do like they did with uh, Fight for the Fallen and Fighter Fest where they do a TV special special episode again. Mm. Um, before full gear, yeah. For yeah. say, um, like they did with Bash at the Beach earlier this year, I think you go Sammy Guevara, Matt Hardy, first blood match. Mm. You don't have to bring in any special, you know, thing. You don't have to bring in a cage. You don't have to bring in a uh structure of any kind like you would for any steel cage match which i think would be amazing between the two of them um you wouldn't have to bring in any interesting objects or giant vets of mimosa i think a first blood match matt hardy sammy guevara mm -hmm. something that wwe would not do in a million years right now yeah i think that is the match you go for. I think that would be an amazing match oh, to yeah. go with. I think, uh, God, because we can't say neither for this, I'm going to say Matt Hardy, but I would mm -hmm. rather it be not the end of this and just be the beginning of that build because it needs a stipulation. Oh, there is a stipulation. If Matt mm -hmm. loses, he's out. If Matt oh. loses, he leaves AEW. So, yeah, Matt. Oh, shoot, knowing leaving. that. Yeah, he's not leaving. Oh, yeah, there's no way. Crap, I'm already locked in. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that detail. Crap, that yeah, that, that makes it very obvious who's winning. But uh, here's the thing. It's not loser leaves AEW. It's if Matt loses, he leaves yep. AEW. Yep, now, so. here's the thing. If Hardy loses, as the article points out that we're looking at, he'll likely say that Matt Hardy is gone from AEW, but Big Money Matt or uh, oh, yeah. V1 Matt or uh, Damascus. That's a fair point not. with his with his current gimmick. That could work out. Yeah, well, I we'll just definitely see Matt see. getting his revenge here. I see. In fact, I could see Matt losing here. And that leads to Damascus versus, uh, especially a first blood match because Damascus is supposed to be a vampire. Uh, mm. Damascus versus uh, Sammy for, in a first blood match. Um, I still think Hardy wins because it'll be a cheap way of going about saying, oh, well, Matt Hardy is gone, but... I am not a uh, yes. Yeah, that'd be yeah. a fucking like fans would shit on that, and AEW has not done stuff like that so far. Yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, so we've come to the main event: John Moxley versus MJF. So, this is a title match. They've been building this one up for quite a while. There's two ways this can go. I mean. With any one-on-one -on -one match, there's two ways it can go. But really, if Mox wins, MJF is going to take a huge ego hit because this will be his first real loss. 
I would there's definitely been matches he's taken where they're very dubious, they're very messy finishes that but he's technically never lost a match, at least not a one on one. And John I feel like I don't know if I think he's going to b- give it up. So I I just have to look at it like do I think John can continue to be the champion? Do I think that MJF could be champion? At this point in time. And I'm going to say. I think John retains. I think this is going to be MJF's first loss. I feel like it's it might be a messy win. So MJF is going to argue left and right. Saying like no nope, no. Nope, I didn't really lose there. It was too messy. You can't say I lost. I might not have gotten it. In fact I might even say. It won't even necessarily be a pin submission. It might just be a DQ so the title doesn't change hands. But I'm going to say for sure, I don't think the title is going to change hands. I'm going to say, because I need to pick a specific one, I'm going to say, I'm going to say John Moxley wins that one. For sure, he's not going to lose the title. Might be a DQ. Count out something where it's not changing hands so it can be contested. Um, but we will, yeah, we'll, we will see how that goes out. Who do you have? So the backstage people, the, the, the dirt sheets, as mm-hmm. it's called, have been talking about the impact COVID has had on wrestling. Yes. AEW is starting to bring back fans. Yeah. Now, from what I've read from fans and everything else, they've been doing it in the safest way possible. Mm. They've been following. um, So a lot of what we see on TV is camera trickery to make it look like there are more people there. But if you were to be shown like where they're actually seated, it's actually much emptier than it looks. Oh, yeah. You can you can kind of tell that it's basically just one chunk of maybe like 25 people, but they're. They're packed in a little tight, and not all of them are wearing their mask right. Right, and so I'm not, I'm not uh, at all saying that they're good and that this should be something they're doing. No, I'm just saying that I just for what they're doing, they're doing it as safely. Yeah, they're doing the the best of any wrestling promotion or really live sports, as far as I've seen. I just, as an aside. I, I feel so upset consistently, just so stressed out that we're continuing reopening when there was a slight downshift. And then within a week of reopening, everything started going back up uh, so much faster and so much worse. And we continued reopening more and more and more. And we keep acting like we can reopen. It's like, no, we should have shut back down immediately. And the longer we go on, the worse it's going to get. Like, we're at a point where COVID is never going to go away. We're just going to get to the point where we can vaccinate. Oh, uh, they're talking about there will be a vaccine in late October. Oh, yeah, a vaccine right before an election from a... No, I'm I'm about to be a mom from South Beach because I'm anti-vax on that shit. I don't try. That's too fast. And a, a yeah. fast a fast vaccine no is clinical trials. very, very... Yeah, no Very clinical dangerous. trials. No, 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 not going for it. I'm gonna um, wait. I'm gonna wait until the first couple waves of vaccines have gone through, so that I can hear the news about what kind of side effects are going out. Right. It's it's the same thing as as when cybernetic implants become a thing. I ain't getting the first ones, but I'll probably get the third wave. Oh, Once those I know. are already out. Oh yeah. Have you heard Elon Musk and it fucking? So. Ugh. Because of COVID, though. WWE is in this obviously same situation, right? Yes. They have no fans, and instead they're doing Thunderdome. Um, Thunderdome is not the worst idea given the circumstances, but it's... Uh, the execution was. <laughs> yeah. It's not worked out well for them. Um, so, they're doing that. There's been talk of, in WWE, taking... So, they crowned their current champion during COVID? But they wanted this to be a bigger crowning moment, years in the making, yeah. uh, finally crowning uh, Drew McIntyre. But they did it in front of no fans, 
they did it before they were even doing the live like trainees in the arena for WrestleMania, mm-hmm. and he's held the title since then. There's been talks of taking it off of him, putting it on Randy Orton, and then bringing him back to the title picture when they have fans in arenas again for his true coronation, as they call it. Mm -hmm. There's been similar theories going around about maybe doing the same with Moxley, but I remind you, if you theorize that they're going to do that, Moxley won his title in front of an arena full of people at Revolution. Yeah. He did not uh, get his coronation moment in an empty arena. Mm -hmm. So, that said, I don't think taking the title off of him right now helps anybody. Mm -hmm. MJF deserves the shot. I'm not saying he doesn't. He's great on the mic. He's got a great record. I don't see him as main event ready. Not a knock on MJF. I just, he needs a little more polish. Sure. He's an amazing heel. He's amazing on the mic, but when was the last time you watched an MJF match and you were like, whoa, this guy's amazing. And you fair, take fair. Him. Like, I'm not saying he's a bad wrestler. I'm saying he is not a star. He is not a champion who will put my ass in a seat to see the title taken off of him. Yeah. Um, that said, I he would put my ass in a seat to watch him get his ass kicked by John Moxley tonight. Oh, yeah. But he's not going to be... Like, I'm going to watch AEW regardless, but are you really going to tune in to see AEW with champion MJF? Especially when he's playing a victimized Trump gimmick right now. Yeah, like, I mean, he's done a lot to make sure that it's not a, a one-to-one parody, but it's we know where he's obvious. drawing, yeah, we know where he's drawing his inspiration. Like, That's the thing, is, the even as a parody, even as a parody, he sounds, he's so Just much like, more well-spoken. <laughs> yeah, but then you've got him, like, looking at the only woman on his team telling her to smile. Yeah. Asking, you know, the only black <laughs> member of his team if he's an idiot. You know, things like that. Yeah. Or asking the only black member of his team if he did his job correctly. You know. Yeah. So, so your prediction is also John Moxley? Yeah. Just because... John Moxley. I think... And this more goes back to, right now, the fact i picked eddie kingston to win Hmm. because i'm not thinking about you know who the fucking like you have to think about the that match in Mm -hmm. conjunction with this match you have to think who do you think could win who do you think is going to be a bigger draw who do you think is going to be a better match for the people and you got to look at what is it, like 25, 30 men? And ask yourself, okay, who here will have a better match with the two guys in the main event tonight down the road? Because that's what that leads to. Yeah. And I don't see MJF having a championship-level match, you know, pay-per-view main event-level match with any of them. Sure. Yeah. Where he's the champion. Okay. okay. I can see him as a contender, but right now he is always the bridesmaid. Um, he needs to get just that one little thing. I don't know if it's something he needs to work on or if it's something AEW needs to work on, but he's just that one, like, it's the matches, man. He's so... He looks like when he goes out to have a match... He knows how to mock his opponent. He knows how to rile up the crowd. He's great at that. But I don't want MJ Hogan. You know, Mm. I don't need Maxwell Jacob Hogan. I don't need, you know, Maxwell Jacob Nash. I need Maxwell Jacob Friedman. And I need him in AEW to know how to wrestle. Okay. Okay. He he looks like he's going through basics quite often in the ring. Yeah. That's me. That's just me. Okay. 
So I still like him a lot. I don't see him as oh, a certainly. Belt holder. I do too, and I'm still very excited for this match and this pay per view. So let's he needs go to hold over the TNT title first. Give him yeah. the TNT title first. Right. So let's go through our picks real quick for the Private Party versus Dark Order. Andrew says Dark Order. I say Private Party. <coughs> he says Silver pins Quen. I say Quen pins Silver. Uh, Britt Baker versus Big Swole. You got Britt Baker. I got Big Swole. Young Bucks versus Jurassic Express. You say Bucks. Nick pinning Jungle Boy. I say Jurassic Express. Luchasaurus pinning Matt. Uh, Dark Order versus Natural Nightmares. Matt Cardona and Scorpio Sky. We both have Dark Order with Brody pinning QT. Hikaru Shida versus Thunder Rosa. We both think that Shida's going to win that. 21 Man Casino Battle Royale. We're both saying Eddie Kingston. You're saying that the last two are going to be Eddie Kingston and Vacant. And I'm saying Eddie and Archer. Page Omega versus FTR. We're both saying FTR. I say Cash Pins Omega. You say Dax Pins Omega. And that's where your Young Buck shenanigans are. Janela Kiss versus Serpentico Luther. We're both saying Kiss Janela. I'm saying Joey... Or you're saying Joey Pins Serpentico. I'm saying Kiss Pins Serpentico. Jericho versus Cassidy. You're saying Cassidy, who is going to throw Jericho in the mimosa. I'm saying Jericho with Ortiz Santana shenanigans, and then they're all three going in that mimosa. Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara. You're saying Hardy, I'm saying Sammy. And then Moxley versus MJF, we're both saying Mox is hanging on to the title. So that's what we got. And I'm going to say the punishment. Let's go back to one we did in the past here. Whoever, whichever specific person wins when we didn't think they would that makes it so that we lose for the night got to write a hundred times i will not disrespect blank being whoever oh that's good whoever did it this could come down to uh what what were the ones we had completely different from each other uh let's see so cassidy jericho cassidy uh, jericho baker swole Dark Order, Private Party, uh, Jurassic Express, Bucks. So it's probably going to be around... Uh, oh, and then Hardy yeah. Sammy. It's probably going to be early on. Yeah, like, we got... We, I we get the feeling one of us is going to have most of the... I, I get the impression one of us is going to have a lot of this one already. Uh, I don't feel super confident. Correct. I was very behind on everything, so I made some dumb, dumb decisions. But all right, that's our punishment. Those are our choices. We hope everybody enjoys All Out tonight, and we hope everybody enjoyed the stream. We're going to do a bit of a post-show, but let me do a quick wrap-up here first. I want to thank you all for watching. Please consider following. If you want to watch the beginning of this stream or any past streams, we did do a uh, Double or Nothing prediction stream back when that happened, which you can find on the YouTube Archive channel. You can also find the last 14 days. I stream uh pokemon i stream uh i've been streaming legacy goku starting next week on the 11th andrew and i are going to be going through super mario brothers 1 2 lost levels 3 and super mario world we're going to be doing multiplayer online in a marathon from the 11th through the 17th to lead up to super mario 3d all-stars which i am excited for i know you don't care but i wanted to do something for it the same way i did for paper mario and this is much more manageable than going through all of those RPGs. Um, you can follow Andrew at Andrew D. Benj on Twitter. You can follow me at Iggy D. Kid. And yeah, be sure to stick around. We're going to take a quick break beforehand, but we're going to do a little post show and kind of talk about WWE for a little bit. It won't be for very long, but stick around for that. We will be RB, folks. Uh, <laughs> gonna go uh, oh and let me
All right. Hey, folks, we are back with the AEW All Out Predictions post show. We're just going to be kind of riffing on WWE, going to listen to some real bad WWE stories. So if any of you are curious about what our predictions were, I have them all in a list here. So just let me know and I can let you know. Say in the chat. So, Andrew, what do you got for me? Have you at all been following wrestling news, specifically WWE, the past two days? No, I've been I've been pretty busy. Ooh. <laughs> um so a lot of talent in WWE have begun doing cameos, Twitch streams, right? Uh things like that. WWE now there's a report that it's because of Lana that they have done mm-hmm. this. There's report that Lana disputes this. She says, it wasn't me, but I could believe that it was, and that she's going to be the scapegoat. Uh, I I believe both sides of this, to be honest. I believe her. I believe the people who say, no, it was her. Uh, I think she's being set up. I don't think she was the actual reason, but I think she's the one that's going to catch all the shit. Mm. So Lana posted a video of her on Instagram promoting Bang Energy Drink. Okay. That's all she did. WWE has now said that you're not allowed to do Twitch, you're not allowed to do cameos, you're not allowed to do any third party uh stuff such as that anymore. Yikes. Period. Yikes. Period. Yeah. Um stating here's the original letter. Uh Furthering my comments last sun- or Sunday regarding the reinvention of our product, it is imperative that we promote our and protect our brand in every conceivable way. Some of you are engaged with outside third parties using your name and likeness in ways that are detrimental to our company. It is imperative that these activities be terminated within 30 days. Violations will result in fines, suspensions, or termination. These are necessary in order to rebuild our brand as we enter the next phase of growth at WWE. Whew. Then they said this when asked about it. And I want you to tell me at what point you go, oh, hell no. Because mm-hmm. I'm already at oh, hell no, but whew, this one's worse. Much like Disney and Warner Brothers, WWE creates, promotes, and invests in its intellectual property, i.e. the stage names of performers like The Fiend Bray Wyatt, Roman Reigns, Big E, and Braun Strowman. Mm. It is the control and exploitation of these characters that allows WWE to drive revenue. They literally said exploitation. Uh huh. That's where I went. Oh shit! Highlighted that and put it on Twitter. Um, they they are... literally said exploitation. Yeah. I. Woo! They couldn't have I said mean, utilization. It, I they don't couldn't... know what it is, but uh, everybody has been saying the the quiet part loud lately, where they just they forget that they're supposed to not actually say that. They know that that's what they're doing, but like. They're supposed yeah. to pretend like it's not what they're doing somehow, they, but holy crap, argue, somebody got fired over that, I'm sure. No, no? I'm pretty sure that's Vince McMahon himself. Uh, they oh, argue Lord. that by controlling, the, and their argument is, no, 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 we're just controlling the characters, not the people. We're exploiting the name, and by using the name outside of... Exploiting WWE the name is still not okay, but there's no form of exploitation that is chill and cool. Right. And so they're blaming Lana, but this impacts top names. And here's the reason why I call bullshit on the whole thing. Mm -hmm. About a week ago, we had a story about um, how actually this was working out for a lot of the talent. A lot of talent. And here's the thing. They argue that by controlling everything, they they, they get more money for the talent in the end. The talent's paid better because they get you know, they don't have control over that. 
I call bullshit because if they were paid well enough, they wouldn't need to be doing cameos, you know, or ads for that's the energy. thing, yeah, or um, sponsorships through Twitch or any of that. Like, <sighs> my goodness. So, um, about a week ago, somebody released a thing talking about how who the top draws on cameo in wwe were Mm -hmm. and who was actually making the most money yeah and it wasn't their top stars it wasn't it was it was people that fans (laughs) have been you know clamoring for to have like hey how about pushing these people no okay how about pushing these people no okay How about pushing these people? Now, it's been those folks who've been making the most money. I'm trying to find the article uh, that lists the names. But when you search WWE Cameo right now, all you're getting is the uh, other stuff. Um, Yeah. Let's see. And uh, so while I look for that, I'll move on to another story. Renee Young, wife of John Moxley, has left WWE. Yep. Uh, she was diagnosed with COVID-19 a couple weeks ago, or Mm -hmm. yeah, back when John had to miss, uh, the buildup to fight for the Fallen and Fighter Fest. Yeah. Um, so when that happens, uh, she announced it on Twitter and WWE lost their shit and were like, we really wish you would have told us beforehand that you were going to announce that you had COVID. And people were like, why would she tell you that she so was going to announce that? So they can that? hide it? No, so they could stop her. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that, yeah, was a weird thing to do. Um, so she said that was kind of like the fact that Stone Cold Steve Austin called her to ask how she was doing when she was out with COVID. The fact that uh, so all these stars and wrestlers reached out to her to find out how she was doing to uh, when she was fighting with COVID. And then nobody from WWE offices like Vince or Triple H or Stephanie called her mm. to see how she was doing when she caught a fucking pandemic disease because of their fucking policies that damn near fucking put her like that could have killed her yep killed uh, her or caused permanent damage that would have well, ended that's her career anyways yeah we keep talking about how oh you know it's just life or death like you either live or you die and that's it and then it's over no we're just now finding out about the long-term effects that this fucking disease will well, have Well, we're on not you. just now finding out about it is the thing. We've known for months it's been coming out that there's a ton of long-term effects that can basically ruin your freaking life. Like lung scarring, uh, organ inflammation, like heavy, heavy sh- brain damage from inflamed brain cells. Like it's... Heavy mm-hmm. stuff. Like just because you survived, COVID. just because you didn't get hospitalized, it can still destroy you. And look at just what we can visually see with things like COVID toe or you know it's bad. It's bad. It's real bad. And so don't you know, don't take it lightly. Wear your wear your mask. Hey. And wear it. WWE. Wear the Play. mask. No questions. Do it. And and like people keep talking about oh man if nxt moves to tuesday nights we can watch both shows and they both get great ratings and they will be moving to tuesday nights like i'm willing to i'm willing to make that the tiebreaker for tonight i'm willing to bet that nxt will move to tuesday nights because the network is fucking pissed Mm -hmm. and um they're actually because of nba and all that and nhl they've been moving the you know episodes around right right and because of that both shows yeah that's why i ended up missing (sighs) them it's like the the first one that was pushed to saturday i didn't realize started an hour earlier and then like last week i was excited it just it's really thrown me off uh but yeah they um 
both of them have gotten massive ratings bordering on the 1 million line mm. because they're not on the same night. Oh, and if, you know, WWE were doing so well, Triple H wouldn't have had to sell $2 million of WWE stock a mm-hmm. week ago. Um, yeah. Apparently, the inner circle was originally going to be called The Fist, which was going to be a reference to Daredevil, or no, The Hand in Marvel Comics, yep, the yep. group. Which is mostly a Daredevil that's... thing, but it's spread yeah. since. Uh, Man, I'm... Maybe I should just search Cameo because I'm like 10 pages deep and I'm only a week in. Wow. But, um, but shit, if it's not on this page, I'll just search Cameo. Hmm. Uh, AEW, Sonny Deville, AEW, AEW, AEW. All right, fuck it. I'm just going to search Cameo. But, okay. Because, <laughs> oh, damn it. There it was. God, no. Just as I clicked away. Oh, uh, the, the worst. Earners, the worst. Uh, top wwe earners on cameo Mm -hmm. so here are the top 10 most expensive stars based on their cost and cost per minute so Mm. this isn't necessarily who's making the most money yet this is just cost rick flair 500 dollars 440 per minute yeah i'm not going to do the per minute thing i'm just going to list their base price uh roman reigns 500 dollars uh alexa bliss 399 Charlotte Flair, 380. Sasha Banks, 375. Mandy Rose, 250. Rey Mysterio, 250. Cassie McIntosh, 200, which is uh, Peyton Royce, I believe. Um, Billy Kay, 150. Kevin Owens, 149. Hmm. Top earners. And I want you to listen to these names and see if you notice something interesting about them, okay? Big E, number one. $62,590 $62,590 or $9. Rick Flair, $30,005. Mandy Rose, $22,503. Peyton Royce, $21,803. Roman Reigns, number five, $18,003. Sasha Banks, Snoop Dogg's cousin, number six. One six or sixteen thousand one twenty seven, Rey Mysterio, fifteen thousand two dollars. Lacey Evans, fourteen thousand twenty seven dollars. Kevin Owens, uh, ten thousand four hundred thirty two dollars. Kurt Angle, nine thousand three hundred and one dollars. The highest earning legends, so not even active talent, is Bret Hart, sixty five thousand seven hundred and ten dollars. Mick Foley is at number two at 34,280. And Jim Duggan beats out Jerry Lawler, The Godfather, Ted DiBiase, Tony Rica, Coco Beware, Lita, and Kevin Nash for number three at 19,000. Did you notice that uh, only one of the legends is out earning Big E? Mm -hmm. And that is Bret Hart with 65,000. Big E is making 62,000. And then Mick Foley and Ric Flair are making thirty-four and thirty thousand respectively on their lists. Look at the list of the highest earners. Ric Flair is not a wrestler. Um, Roman Reigns was out at the time he came back that Sunday. Rey Mysterio is technically out with having his eye ripped out. Kurt Angle is not a wrestler. He is a uh, on-screen talent. The so that's four of your top ten were at the time not wrestling. Then the others are Mandy Rose, Peyton Royce, Sasha Banks, Lacey Evans. So four of your leftovers, four of the uh, six that you had left were women, and that leaves your top two active talent men wrestlers, who are who they build their company around as Big E and Kevin Owens at the time. Neither of them are getting a push right now. Yeah. Neither of them. Neither one. So, in fact, The Miz appears to be talking shit about whether Big E is a star or not. Yeah, you didn't even make the list, Miz. Period. Period. I wouldn't be talking shit on people who made the list. 
And this report came out about a week ago. And then all of a sudden, Vince McMahon's like, uh, y'all shouldn't be doing that because it's embarrassing me. Oh, Roman gosh. Reigns is number fucking five on that list. Oof. <sighs> all right. So with that, I do got to yeah. go. I got some stuff I got to get done. So if, right. if you have, if, if you have, uh, one especially juicy story, I think we have just enough time for that. Uh, let me check. Um, a lot's been happening, but man, uh, MJF theorizes that AEW will be the brand. Oh, here we go. Jim Cornette, whom I hate. Ugh. Uh, TLDR thinks that John Moxley is fucking lucky to have Renee Young as a wife because he's not good enough for her. Mm. And he used a little bit of a code word. Uh, whenever a straight r- white man of power uses the phrase well-spoken or very well-spoken, oh. that is a backhanded compliment to let you know that he didn't expect a person like a woman or a person of color to be able to talk like that. Yeah. So that's the first thing he said about Renee Young. But she's very well spoken, and then continue to talk about women as if they were objects by saying, uh, "He's lucky to get this one. He won't get another one. He better hang on to that one." Uh, he also oh. referred to her as fucking insane, attractive, intelligent, because he says getting one fucking insane, attractive, intelligent woman is all you can hope for in life. So he's implying that she's fucking insane, attractive, intelligent. Yeah. And the only thing insane would be her dating him, of course. So mm, go fuck yourself, Jim Cornette. In fact, you and I have a Jim Cornette story, a personal Jim Cornette story. Do you remember this? Uh... When we went to fight for the Fallen? No. What? We were talking about something in line. And a guy in line in front of us turned around oh, and said, yeah. don't let Jim Cornette hear you say that. I just you looked at me and yelled, fuck Jim Cornette. And the guy turned around like all meek. It's like, yep, oh, yep. that guy. Mm-hmm. All right. <sighs> this has been a, been a pretty long one, but I want to thank you all for inviting us into your home tonight, whether you watch on your computer, your tablet, TV, your game console, your phone, however it is that you watched, we appreciate you tuning in, and we hope you have a wonderful night watching wrestling tonight. Go check out All Out. It's on Bleacher Report. Tonight at 8. buy ins at 7. Check it out. We'll be back. Uh, I'm going to be back on Monday with some stuff. I'm going to be doing Pokemon tomorrow. And then next uh, Friday, we're going to be stirring up that Mario Marathon. So thank you all very much. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night, everybody.